to create new materials and structures. And I think porous materials is another interesting possibility. And um, one possibility is, um, you know, uh, expanded polystyrene, which is used as a packaging material in, for microelectronics, the white stuff. It's produced at uh, 4 million tons per year. It's a huge uh, industry. But it's all based on um, petroleum. So it's, uh, it's an oil-based ba plastic. And if we could replace it with something uh, bio-based, that would be quite um, fantastic. The problem is if you use um, starch from potatoes, it cannot take the moisture that we have in the air inside here. But what we found was that when you reinforce the cell walls by these uh, cellulose nanofibers, then suddenly we have properties even better than expanded polystyrene. So that's a very interesting possibility. And the biomimetics context is actually that uh, if you look at cell walls in nature, if you take a, you take a vegetable, for instance, it, it contains almost uh, typically, let's say, 90% of water. The rest is cellulose, and the cellulose is really keeping the cells together and stabilizing them against the presence of the liquid. So these are the wood potato foams, um, which Anna Svagan made. Um, this is frozen smoke, which um, Usain Siaki and Chi Chao is working on. Frozen smoke is essentially aerogels. It's the popular name for aerogels, which are typically made from, from um, ceramics. But in our case, we are using the cellulose for, for the aerogels. And uh, these materials have uh, remarkable mechanical properties, but I think perhaps the main interesting thing is that you can make thermal insulation with much superior properties than those that we use today. So if I, if I skip very quickly the summary and I can say just, maybe you can say that we should show cellulose more respect. Cellulose is a fantastic material, so we should use it so that cellulose becomes happy with our utilization of it. Um, I want to finish off also by, by saying, um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, in particular Tom Lindström from Bimake and Skogsindustrierna who actually brought me to KTH from the very beginning and <coughs> funded our work in the beginning. Um, Biomime, as we mentioned, Wallenberg Wood Science Center. Sweet Tree Technologies is uh, teaching us uh, that you need to patent your ideas. We're learning slowly, but we're, we're getting there. And then uh, people in my group, uh, Chi Chu, uh, Marielle Henriksson, Anna Svagan, Asa Samir, Usin Siaki. And then uh, Professor Ikala, who came up with the original aerogel idea. Uh, the most recent material we've made has only 0.5% uh, solid material. The rest is um, gas. And Professor Hiro Jan of Kyoto, he... <laughs> When I talked to him in the beginning about uh, materials from nanofibers, um, I was asking him, what is the goal of your work? And then he responded, oh, it's very easy. I want to understand the soul of the tree. <laughs> I think it's a typical Japanese answer, but uh, there is a, a great wisdom in that. If we can understand how the remarkable material of the cell walls in plant is, um, operates and is designed, we can uh, create improved materials for ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you Lars.